Hey, welcome! In this video we're going to make this beautiful end grain cutting board that slides over a sink. This is some extremely hard maple from my hometown in Minnesota, and I'm going to split this in half so that I can keep as much thickness as possible, um, because there's quite a bit of cup in these boards. Since these boards are so wonky, it is much safer for me to rip these in half at the bandsaw. After several passes through the jointer and the planer, I ended up with nice flat boards. This cutting board is going to be 16 and a half by 16 and a half to fit over that sink, and I want to be able to process as much of this through my 13 inch planer as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and glue up three of the big boards and leave the one extra board um, off, and I will end up planing that down to this exact same thickness as the three boards together end up, and then do that glue up um, at closer to the end so that I'm able to at least get the bulk of this through the planer. I really like these glue bots because that way you don't have to try to be, you know, continue to get the glue out. It actually comes from the bottom, so there's always glue at the ready. And I really like these little craft rollers for being able to evenly distribute the glue very quickly, especially when you're doing bigger glue ups. High quality parallel bar clamps are one of the best investments that I made for my shop. Even just a few of them can really help a lot. I really like these Bessies, but there's several brands that seem to make nice models. I wax the clamp so that if any glue does get on them, it does come off easier, and I additionally use wax paper to try to prevent any from even getting to my nice, valuable clamps. I planed the three boards down, and I also planed the extra board with it to make sure that they would end up at the exact same depth, so now I'm just going to uh, attach the fourth board so I only have one seam to deal with instead of, you know, doing it all from the start. I also glued up several walnut strips, so they're about an inch uh, thick, so that I'm going to have a nice one inch walnut border around the outside of the cutting board. So now since I just had one seam to deal with, I could use a card scraper to make sure that this was nice and even. Next I'm going to cut these into inch and a half strips, and I'm using my Meg Switch feather board here, and that just makes a nice little spacer for me to just line it up with hit and then run it through the sled. I don't have a really nice big cross cut sled, I probably need to make one at some point, but this works perfectly fine. As I mentioned, this maple is super hard, so even though I have a fairly fresh blade in, I still do get some burning, but that's okay, it's going to sand out later. To make the pattern more interesting, I'm going to flip these every other, and then I just played around with it until I got the best look that I liked for, you know, where this kind of spots were in the maple. Occasionally I'll see somebody put an edge grain border around an end grain cutting board, and that's not a good idea because as this expands and contracts over time, the edge grain wood is not going to do so in the same way, and eventually that board is going to fail and you will end up with cracks. So you want to keep end grain with end grain. So that's why the outside uh, walnut border is also going to be an end grain. Next, I spent even more time putzing around to make sure that I had the best look for the lumber that I was using. I apologize for the terrible camera angle, but it is what it is at this point. So anyway, hopefully here you can see how helpful it is to have that craft roller to really be able to get the glue distributed quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and glue up all the maple pieces first. So I'm going to flip them all in uh, the same direction so that when I flip them back, I end up with the pattern that I selected. Tried to clamp this a lot to keep it as flat as possible. Next, I removed the excess glue with a dull chisel. A drum sander is definitely a luxury to have when doing end grain cutting boards, um, but before I had one I did use a router sled and that also worked really well for flattening them at the end. So this one board took several different clamp ups, so the next uh, one is going to be to just do one edge of the walnut, and then we're going to square that off, and then we'll do the other edge of the walnut. There's a couple of reasons why the walnut is going on two parts for the edges. Uh, one is because I was using scraps, so I had some you know, longer pieces so that I didn't have to go make such a wide um, board of walnut to start with. And if I had made the full 16 and a half width of walnut, then I wouldn't have been able to use my planer. So uh, this just made it easier and it totally worked out fine to just clamp those together. It's a nice tight seam and you'd never know the difference. Next, I trimmed off all four edges so that I had a nice flat surface so that I could put the other border on. Additionally, I jointed this edge to make sure that it would be a nice tight fit for the other edge of the walnut. Next, I repeated the exact same process for the other edges. 
I again trimmed up all of these little extra edges at the table saw. I that the inner maple part was dead flat and I wanted to keep it that way. So um, since the walnut was just slightly thicker than the maple at this point, since the maple had already been run through the drum sander, um, I didn't want to just go right to the drum sander in case that uh, walnut wasn't exactly even where it was glued up on the outside. So if, you know, one little piece had been down a little lower, it could have thrown the whole board off. So instead, I decided to use a flush trim bit, and then I have these little 90 degree braces, and so I just clamped this to the board, and then I flush trimmed off the extra walnut on every edge um, fr of the front as well as the back, and then that made it be still dead flat with the walnut or with the maple, sorry, that was on the inside. Since this board is gonna be over a sink, um, the juice grooves are a little bit unique. Instead of being you know, four juice grooves all the way around, I'm just gonna do two juice grooves down both of the long sides so that any juices can actually drip down into the sink. This made the juice groove process actually a lot easier. I'm switching out to a half inch flat bit here, and next I'm going to router in edges on the bottom of the board so that it just creates a little bit of a lip so that the board sits over the sink nicely. So obviously you just want to do this to whatever size your sink is. Mine is a little bit over a quarter inch of lip. I'm going to start with just really small passes and I'm going to work my way in continuing to measure until I get the exact fit that I'm looking for. I won't bore you with the hours spent sanding this board. End grain takes a tremendous amount of sanding if you really want to get those lines out, especially from the drum sander. Um, and this maple was very hard and took a tremendous amount of time. So I'm just gonna show you a few tips. So one, I used a socket of the same size as my juice groove to be able to really get in to sand those. And then another key is you definitely want to raise the grain. So spray your board with water, let it dry. I did this between each uh, grit and each time it continued to um, cause it to feel very rough. So I'm happy that I actually did this between each pass. And so um, basically once you spray this and it dries, it's gonna feel like you never sanded it at all. But then when your client actually washes this board, um, they are not gonna have that experience where the board no longer feels smooth. So you really definitely want to make sure that you take this step. Next is the oil bath. I use food grade mineral oil and normally this nice big bin is big enough that my boards just soak in it for a few hours, but this board is too big. So I'm just gonna pour the mineral oil over it and let it soak in for several hours. I definitely love seeing the colors really pop once you apply the oil. I always keep a pot of this concoction ready to go and it is one part beeswax and three parts food grade mineral oil. And this is a really nice product to um, have on hand. You can just put it in little containers and give it away with your cutting boards. And that's a nice way to make sure that your customers keep their boards in tip top shape and to be able to advertise for your little business. I apply this very liberally to the board and let it soak in for several hours. Once it has had a chance to take up all of the wax that it wants to, I go back and I wipe off the excess with a paper towel and then I finish by buffing it with a nice soft cloth. Sanding thoroughly is the key to getting those beautiful shiny juice grooves and making sure that the whole board is super smooth. I hope that you found this video helpful, and if you are enjoying my work, please like and subscribe and follow along on my maker's journey, and I hope that you are creating something really special and having an awesome time doing so.